Hello, everyone. I am Lois Bannerman. I was a very famous harpist, not only here locally, New York City, but all over the United States and in Europe. Also later on in life, got into movies and TV and even Broadway. And in the 1950s, I lived here in Ridgefield, oh, one of the largest pieces of land in Ridgefield. It went into Danbury, it went into North Salem, Turner Road, Sawmill, that whole area. But I was born in 1920 in Hempstead, Long Island. My mother was a very good harpist and played professionally. Starting with three years old, I sat beside her and listened to her. And when I was four, I said, Mom, can, can I play too like you? And she got me a little harp and oh, we played together. I loved it, no pressure, fun being together with my mother. Now, the other thing I loved, I loved roller skating, not like roller blades today, the old clunky metal four wheel with a key and leather straps and you know, my parents always told me, never speak to anybody that you don't know, strangers, and I knew that. But one day when I was 10 years old, I was skating along and I was humming one of my tunes. And it was from a harp song that I was learning. And all of a sudden, this car stopped. And this man jumped out and he grabbed me and put his hands over my face and I started wiggling and trying to get away from him and I remember him calling to the other man get a rope the other man left the car running jumped out got a rope was tying my legs together and I just kicked with these metal wheels knocked him back heard the man then say drop her because a car came around the corner just in time. They found me lying on the sidewalk, bleeding and bruised and crying. The police came immediately, took me to the station house. My parents came, a doctor came, they calmed me down. They tried to see if I remembered anything about what the men looked like. I didn't remember anything, it was so, traumatic. I was only 10 years old. The next day, the Nassau newspaper, entire first page about what had happened to me and what a brave, courageous, wonderful little girl I was for beating off the attackers. That same day, New York Daily News, third page, half a page, my story again. They never found the men. I never forgot the event. What did I turn to? I turned to my harp playing, my music. When the flashbacks came, I went to my harp. It helped me through this terrible time. Well, after that, I also became so proficient when I was 11 and 12, I started taking lessons from very well-known harpists. By the time I was 14, I was playing professional concerts. I really didn't have much of a childhood because I was a child prodigy. I entered at age 15 Juilliard. I entered early. Oh, the training that I got at Juilliard. It was absolutely amazing. It so prepared me to audition on any level. And after Juilliard, I started touring, not with my mother anymore, but on my own, all over Europe, all over the United States. I played ensembles, I played with symphonies, I played solo concerts. Again, I had no time for really any type of a social life. I was also now involved 
because I was told I was very pretty. I played on Broadway. I played in the movies. I played on television. Whenever they needed a harpist, I was the go-to person to call to. I never had time for dating, but then at a concert party afterwards, I met Harold Herrick. Oh my goodness. He was so handsome, so charming, so romantic. He was a Marine pilot. We married. Oh, we were so happy. He flew home on weekends. And my son, I was so surprised, was just like I was. A young boy wanting to play the harp, sitting at my side, saying, Mommy, can you get me a harp? Can you teach me to play? It was a replay of my own life. Again, I didn't pressure him. I didn't ask him to practice. It was fun, the two of us playing together. Well, all was going well. It was Christmas. My husband was flying home to be with us. Two miles from home, his plane went down in Long Island Sound. On Christmas Day, his body washed ashore. And Christmas was never, ever the same in our family again. It was just so tragic. What did I do? Again, I turned to my music. Now more than ever, more shows, more TV, more movies, more Broadway, more touring. This is what my life became all about. It wasn't until 10 years later that I met somebody I thought this might work, and it was mostly because of my son. The man was named John Sr., and he was from Ridgefield, Connecticut. Graduated top in his class from MIT, top in his class from Harvard, was an extremely successful businessman but wanted more than anything else to be a gentleman farmer. And I said, he had this huge piece of land in Ridgefield. It was so good for my son not to be in hotels, not to be traveling with me, to, but to have a home base. Now we had no neighborhood children to play with because there were no neighbors anywhere near us. But we wouldn't fight his friends from school. Oh, we had stables with horses they could ride. We had beautiful orchards and they could climb the trees. We had an Olympic swimming pool they could swim in. And off the swimming pool, my husband had built me this harp room, all encased in glass. And I collected harps from all over the world at all different time periods. And my son and I would play short little concerts for his friends. After the concerts, they could pick one of the inexpensive harps and they could try and play along with us. I also went into the schools with my harps as a volunteer, promoting the beauty of harp playing. Well, the grounds might have been wonderful, but the marriage was not. And after a couple of years, we divorced. Another painful time in my life. And what did I turn to? I turned to my harp playing again. But this time I was getting tired of traveling. I wanted to go to a place that was special and I found that place. It was in the Berkshires at Tanglewood. This is where musicians went. It was the finest place ever to lose myself in my music. I taught at the Berkshire School of Music and played continually at Tanglewood. I was also able to go to Boston, to New York, and to travel abroad from time to time, and by now my son was grown, and he was also 
making a name for himself as a harpist. I told myself, Lord, you're never going to marry again. You've had it with marriage. But you never know when something is going to come into your life. And again at a party, after a Tanglewood concert, I met this man, Howard Campbell. Oh, he was so charming. He was older than I was. He had nothing to do in the field of music. He was an architect from the South, from Savannah. Oh my goodness. This just did not see the right combination, but it was. He was taking old townhouses and he was making them into magnificent works of art. He had just worked on one for himself and next door a bed and breakfast. I was totally shocked when he said to me, will you marry me? I said, no, 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 I don't want to marry again. But I rethought what I had said. And I said, you know, life is a little lonely. This man is so charming and so real and down to earth. I am going to marry. It was a beautiful marriage. I had a heart problem. I died in my 70s. But I really only had one regret at that time. John Downey, a very famous harp composer, had written a concerto just for me because he felt that I was the only one that could do it justice. I agreed to do it. But I was older. I didn't have that passion, that determination to practice for six or seven hours a day. I never performed this concerto. I was never ready. And I was honest about it after my death. The most touching thing happened. My son Mark went to John and said in my mother's memory, I would like to try this symphony. And if you think I'm okay, I would like to perform it. Oh, he did more than justice of this piece. And it was premiere at the Warsaw Symphony in Poland. This concerto has become so famous, so well known because of my son, Mark. How proud could a mother be? I think from my story, you can see that when you go through tragedy, in my case, a kidnapping, the loss of a beloved husband so early in life, a bad marriage, you have to turn to something. In my case, I could turn to music, but it can be gardening or cooking or painting or tennis. You've got to have a go-to place. And also, you know, you may have children and you may want these children to follow in your footsteps. You cannot force it. It has to come naturally. It has to be fun. There has to be that passion. So don't be disappointed if your children don't follow in your footsteps. They may find something else. So thank you for listening to my story. Ridgefield is a town of the arts. There were so many famous artists that lived here. But as far as I know, I was the only well-known harp player to come from Richmond. Thank you for listening to my story.